So uh, today I'm, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, how I uh, kind of developed my career as well as my, my personal life. So they have to all go together. So we cannot just do one or the other uh, as, as people, as human beings. And I think it's, it's, it's good to have both. So uh, I think the first slide is going to show the basically where I started my undergraduate degree. So I'm originally from Turkey. I, I started my chemical engineering studies at the Middle East Technical University in Ankara in Turkey, which is uh, one of the best technical universities in engineering. It still is, actually. Uh, so one thing that I suggest for those of you who are eventually going to do your PhDs, I suggest just bypass the masters. The reason I did the masters is because uh, English was my second language, so I wanted, and my writing was terrible, and I knew that. Uh, so I wanted to write a thesis so that I could improve myself, uh, and then and then I would write a PhD thesis. So if you're going to do PhD eventually, I suggest to directly go to uh, to PhD, and some of my students are, are here who have done that because. Your salary starts, or uh, your clock starts ticking after you finish your PhD as far as your future salaries are concerned. So the earlier you start, the more you know, potential earnings that you will have uh, along, you know, to your, throughout your life. So that you shouldn't do anything for somebody else. You, if you're doing something, you should be decided, making your decision. So I'll give you an example. So when my daughter was born, and then very early on, when she was uh, about a couple of weeks old, we knew that there will be some some issues with uh, with her development, and she would need a lot of support. Uh, actually, we started her not living for eight months. Like she was going to die at eight months, and then they said, okay, three years, and then twelve years, and then. So that was what we were actually dealing with, so I said, okay, am I going to be able to do my PhD, you know, under these circumstances, because, you know, she will need a lot of help and support. So, um, so I thought about actually quitting my PhD. So, uh, thank God for my husband at the time, and then he said that if you're doing something, you have to do it uh, yourself as not because of somebody else because if, if something happens if you regret that decision then you will blame her for the rest of your life right because if I drop my PhD my whole life would have been very different so do not be influenced by anybody else when you're making major life decisions yourself whether it's your uh, partner your child your parents your whatever because you're going to be living with that decision yourself for the rest of your life. So I'm so glad that I, I chose to stay in, in PhD program. And then we were able to, you know, sort things out because no matter what you deal with, it's all okay at the end. Uh, in the meantime, I was able to uh, do some part-time work at, uh, in France. So I went to France to teach uh, graduate courses there. I forgot what the years were, but I did that twice. Uh, I also went to United Arab Emirates as a, during my sabbatical, uh, which was quite interesting, and I suggest for everybody to go to the Middle East and kind of see those areas. Get out of your comfort zones and, uh, and then uh, experience, uh, experience new cultures, new places, and so on. It's, uh, it's been an interesting, uh, interesting uh, career. Uh, I would strongly suggest for those of you who are doing your PhDs, being a faculty member is a very good job. You have a, uh, you basically have a job security if you're doing a decent job, and then uh, you're basically your own boss. So I strongly suggest uh, that as a, you know, at least think about it as a, uh, as a, as a career. So uh, what did I learn? you know, throughout my experiences. So some of the, the things that I would like to, to mention is uh, you have to develop your personal life as well as your career. So you have to plan that uh, as well as your career because, I mean, not everything goes according to plan, especially in your personal life, but still you have to have a vision, right? Uh, get involved in different activities and grow your network. I mean, what you're doing today is, is really good. 
uh, because uh, believe it or not, all these jobs and, and some of my students will uh, confirm that, that you get a lot of jobs, opportunities from your network. Your friends, your professors, your people that you meet. Uh, it is really important to get involved in other activities other than your classes and, and courses and so on. To figure out what you're good at or what you like, you have to put yourself in situations that are uh, not that you're not comfortable with. That's why you have to get out of your comfort zone and and figure out what uh, you know what you're good at, what you like doing, and uh, and so on. So always have to put yourself in kind of challenging situations. Get out of your comfort zone to figure out to basically figure out yourself. That's really important. So one area that I'm working on is uh, thermal energy storage. When, when somebody says energy storage, uh, it's usually mostly batteries and so on that, that you would think about. But when it comes to thermal energy, it's not really batteries because there's no, like in uh, some of the technologies that I'm developing, uh, there's no nasty chemicals. It's basically air, water, and some sand-like material, which is like earth, right? So there is still hope. There is still hope. Uh, uh, so another area of research that I, I work is on the carbon dioxide capture and, and recycling. So basically, yes, we have to remove carbon dioxide, but then what do we do with it? Uh, some people put it underground. You know, we have some uh, geologists, uh, but then uh, how much we can put it underground? If we put too much, does it uh, cause earthquake? Uh, uh, the, the topic that I'm working in is what about you get the carbon dioxide and basically turn it into some other chemicals like uh, fuel for example, right? Uh, and then you can, uh, you can get the carbon dioxide directly from air or from uh, wherever it's, it's actually produced in, uh, uh, in power generating plants for instance. And of course hydrogen purification, hydrogen is a clean energy now, if you can get it sustainably by electrolysis from water. Uh, you can uh, purify that as well. And natural gas purification. Uh, the last topic that I want to talk to you about are the, are the biofuels. So basically these are fuels that you can get from agricultural byproducts. For example, uh, you grow corn uh, and then you eat the corn on the cob and then whatever is left over and then all the, the plant uh, uh, Byproducts. You can actually ferment those and produce some alcohols, which you can use. So those alcohols are uh, bioethanol and bioethanol. So then you can actually use them in your car as your fuel instead of the, the fossil fuels, for example. The, uh, it's not only the engineers that will solve the problems. I mean, I can develop a technology, but if it's not taken up by the people and people in psychology, like has to work with us so that is it something that people will work with. Uh, look at nuclear energy, for example, right? I mean, there's all these dilemmas about, you know, is it a good energy, is it a not good energy? Uh, a lot of people are against it. There is all these social uh, media and things like that, all this psychology behind the science. So uh, even though you have a concrete science, uh, all these other things, whether it's the policy, whether it's the psychology, uh, that will really affect the take up of the science by the by the population, by the people. Okay, well, I have been through a lot of stuff, so I can handle this, right? But to, to know that yourself, you have to be in those situations so that you know you can handle, right? That's why you have to put yourself in those challenging situations where you figure out what you're made out of, right? Like, can you survive this? Can you not do that? Or whatever the case might be, right? So these are my area of, of research, and then uh, this is my contact, and uh, so I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you.